Tesla has become well known for their vast network of fast charging DC stations, also known as Tesla superchargers, which you're bound to have seen in gas station or Walmart parking lots with over 60,000 individual superchargers worldwide, 28,000 of which being in the United States. And with this brings the question that's on many Tesla owners' minds, including my own being, is supercharging actually bad for your Tesla's battery? Well, that's what we We'll be talking about in today's video. So Tesla superchargers are considered level three charging, often called DC fast charging or simply rapid charging, which is the fastest type of electric vehicle charging currently available, far surpassing level one charging that uses a 120 volt outlet and even level two charging, which is what you get from charging on a 240 volt system installed at your home. In fact, unlike level one and level two chargers, which use AC, which is short for alternating current, level three chargers deliver direct current or DC directly to the EV's battery, allowing for much quicker charge times. And this is because while a level two charger that you may have installed in your garage will only offer up to say 71 kilometers of range added to your vehicle per hour charged at 48 watts of power, well, level three chargers can provide anywhere from 50 kilowatts to over 350 kilowatts of power at once. And this is going to be depending on the charger and the vehicle in question, which for most EVs, this means charging from 20% to 80% state of charge in as little as 20 to 40 minutes, though exact times will of course vary by the vehicle model and the charging station capacity. Now, the most powerful Tesla superchargers currently available as of November, 2024, have a max output of 250 kilowatts, which in reality is only fully available for certain models of Teslas, including the Model 3 and Y long range and the Model Y performance, as other models tend to cap out below the 250 kilowatts available, like say my standard range 2024 Model 3 that has a maximum charging power of 170 kilowatts. It's also important to know that electric vehicle batteries are powered by direct current, right? That DC we were speaking about earlier, but the electricity from the grid or a standard outlet or even 240 outlet at your house is going to be alternating current. So when charging at home using that AC power, the EV's onboard charger is responsible for converting this AC power to DC before it reaches the battery. However, the onboard charger of your Tesla has a limit on how quickly it can process this conversion, typically maxing out around 11 kilowatts. So this means that AC charging usually adds around 20 to 40 miles of range per hour plugged in, depending on the vehicle. Now, in contrast to this, DC fast charging occurs when the AC to DC conversion happens outside of the vehicle at the charging station itself, like a supercharger. And since the electricity is already converted to DC before it even enters the car, well, it bypasses the onboard charger entirely, allowing the battery to charge much more rapidly. But with this bypass, one concern that many EV owners have had with fast charging over the years is the potential for quicker battery degradation as the high rate of energy delivery could in theory strain the battery and lead to irreversible long-term range loss over years of using these superchargers. So overall, due to the speed and infrastructure required though, level three charging is generally a lot more expensive per kilowatt hour than level one or level two charging, though that convenience factor makes it worthwhile for longer trips, which is why millions of EV owners use superchargers monthly. But this still doesn't answer the question that the millions of Tesla owners have wanted an answer to for several years. For a long time, it was thought that frequent level three fast charging was 
bad for your Tesla battery's longevity. And that prioritizing level two charging as much as possible has been the best course of action to maintain a healthy battery long term. In fact, Tesla themselves used to uh, even mention this and would warn you on screen when supercharging too frequently. However, new data released from Recurrent, which analyzed over 12,500 Tesla vehicles in the United States, reveals that this concern might actually have been somewhat overblown, where according to their report, there seems to be little little to no difference in battery degradation between Teslas that fast charge frequently and those that use it rarely, which I thought was very interesting as this goes against everything we've really known about battery charging over the years. So let's dive in and look over the data. A recurrent study looked closely at the effects of fast charging on thousands of Tesla batteries to see if the built-in software and safety measures in the battery management system, BMS for short, do protect against potential damage that DC charging could theoretically cause. And to answer the question of does fast charging harm Tesla batteries, well, the short answer is that occasional fast charging seemingly won't harm your EV battery to a high degree. And recurrent study, which examined Teslas that use fast charging over 90% of the time versus those that use it less than 10% of the time, like most EV owners, to be fair, found no statistically significant difference in battery degradation between these two groups, which again, I found extremely surprising. And this means that frequent fast charging doesn't appear to cause any measurable impact on battery range loss as of right now. In fact, here's a chart showing the range loss over time between Teslas that fast charge 70% of the time and those that fast charge less than 30% of the time, where we can see little to no meaningful difference for both Model 3s and Model Ys. That said, it's important to note though that since there are so many fewer cars that fast charge for most of their charging, well, of course, the orange curve, which represents this segment, is noisier and has more irregularities. And one could also conclude, based on this, that the data for fast charging only is severely lacking at only a couple hundred vehicles studied. Overall, the research suggests that Tesla's advanced thermal voltage and battery management systems play a crucial role in protecting the battery even with regular fast charging. And these systems carefully regulate the power flow to the vehicle based on various factors like the battery's temperature, the state of charge, and external conditions. Tesla in particular is known for its highly responsive battery management, which adjusts charging speeds to maintain battery health in different temperatures and at varying charge levels. Now, what about the age of Tesla batteries being a factor at play regarding degradation, fast charging or not? Well, recurrence data primarily covers Tesla models from 2012 to 2023, though the majority of vehicles, 90% to be exact, are from 2018 or newer. And then 57% are from 2021 or newer as well. So this means that the data is going to be heavily weighted and skewed towards those newer vehicles, essentially showing the effects of fast charging over about five to six years. So for this reason, it's still somewhat unclear whether a cumulative effect from fast charging may one day appear in these batteries as they continue to age. Additionally, I personally find the study also lacks detailed charging history for older vehicles, so it can't confirm if their range has already been significantly affected by past charging habits and other factors that come into play. One consistent finding, however, is that all Tesla batteries, whether fast charging or not, do experience some range degradation over time, which of course is completely normal though. Lithium batteries naturally lose capacity as they age and are used regularly. And this gradual loss is expected in EVs as well. Now, while research is now showing that fast charging is generally safe for your Tesla, there are certain conditions where it may have a greater impact on your EV battery nonetheless. Most importantly, it's very important to avoid fast charging in extreme heat or extreme cold unless you precondition the battery 
first, as preconditioning allows the car's thermal management system to adjust the battery temperature accordingly, either cooling or heating as needed, to handle the higher charge rate safely. And most Teslas will automatically start preconditioning when you navigate to a fast charging station in the car's navigation system, as I mentioned earlier. And finally, try to avoid fast charging when the battery is either very low or very high in state of charge, as resistance levels are higher at these extremes of state of charge range, which can also potentially damage your battery if done repeatedly over the years. So with all that said, new data has now come to light demonstrating the potential impact that fast DC charging may have on the longevity of EV batteries, which actually leans towards minimal damage over time, which is a great thing to hear. However, it's still important to consider that accelerated range loss or battery degradation may still happen later on in an EV's life and accentuated by fast DC charging, that data point still remains unknown at this time. The fact that most of these 13,000 Teslas in recurrent study though are from 2021 and even 2023 or newer does tell us though that the battery management system in these vehicles are getting better and better over time at regulating that energy flow into the battery packs. So would I personally buy a Tesla or other EV without a home charger to exclusively use supercharged though, the answer is still going to be no, as although supercharging is cheaper than gas, yes, my region doesn't have nearly enough superchargers available to make this a feasible option, and the harsh winter would turn the ownership experience into a nightmare, but that's just my take on it after four years of Tesla ownership here in Canada. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please take a moment to leave it a like, subscribe to my channel, and check out my Amazon storefront using the link down below in this video's description to shop great Tesla accessories while supporting the channel. With that said, make sure to watch one of these two videos next, and I'll see you in the next one.